Martha Lynn Fitzgerald. I'm one of the co-founders of Lair. Um, today I'll tell a little bit about the history of Lair, uh, what the products are, just so that you know like what you can do with Lair if you want to use it. I have a load of examples. Um, I will share a little bit also, or actually a lot, about where we think AR is headed. And that will end actually in what you can do too. And then I'm done. Cool. <coughs> Sander is going to share after that a little bit. He's an AR artist. He is, uh, yeah, uh, uh, we help him be with Layer. Because he actually shows us the way, I think, more than the other way around. And in a way, maybe that's also why we're here. But uh, he'll share his, his pieces and why he does what. And she, Gene will, uh, Gene is actually uh, the first US layer employee. He's an AR strategist uh, up in the valley. And he'll be our man on the ground here, so every couple weeks he probably will show up and uh, you can see him more often. And he'll share some stuff about theory, about, about ubiquitous computing and AR, and, and what his uh, ideas are on that and storytelling. So we get a little bit of our, what we're thinking. And, and yeah, infusion now in the beginning. And yeah, hopefully see you again uh, in August at least and see some cool shit. Um, before I say what I want, I was wondering like if I can hear from two people, you know, like, what's your AR dream? You know, your God, you can do anything. What, you know, you close your eyes. What are you doing then in AR? So anybody wants to jump in on that? I think it would be interesting to create it from the cell phone screen. Uh -huh. Bring it to something that's accessible to many people to know what monetary value they have, how much money they have, or if they have as much or not. I think AR has the potential to be something that's ubiquitous in right. society that is informative to a point that has never been possible before. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. I kind of see it as an opportunity for a completely new level to tell stories. And um, it makes an experience that's so unique with the idea tell a story. I mean, when you think about like, the spoken word versus literature versus the same thing to audio, the same theater, and like watching this uh, film or video, this whole augmented reality is really new. You stay for that video. And that's really interesting to me. Yeah. Um, I think for me, one thing that right now a lot of people look at augmented reality is like, you know, you do something and then you get a reaction. It's like that just kind of like one, two step based thing. Yeah, and so I think and it would be interesting in the future things that are kind of less less just linear and more kind of like all inclusive, like whether it be kids games that you know involve somehow tracking things and just dealing with something that's more, I guess, longer time to experience it. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Cool. Cool. Good to hear. So my latest thing is that, you know, we kind of currently live in the presumption that this is the space of the art center. But actually with AR we can do anything with it. You know, we can have be in a whole different world. So that's why I always talk now about going beyond the presumption that space is exclusive because now it's ours. That's kind of a running theme in everything we do. So uh, this is uh, uh, the three founders of Layer. Claire Bonestam, she's about to get her second baby back in Holland. And Admiral von der Klein, the CEO. Yeah, we're, how do you say that? We, we founded the company based on vision and ideas and passion. We're actually not really friends. We don't hang out together, but we just love what we do. We don't really think too hard, as in like, like how do we do it and make business plans and Excel sheets and stuff. No, we just yeah, follow our gut mostly. And, and that really brought us far. And for us, it started uh, uh, with Layer in 2008, 2009, when the G1 came out. It was uh, the first Android phone that had a compass. So with GOIR, as it's called, it works because you have the, the, the GPS, you know, then, then you know where you are with your phone. And with the compass, you know where the phone is pointing at. So if you know I'm here, you know that over there is the Eiffel Tower. You hold up your phone. There. You can put that on the screen up there is the Eiffel Tower and not there. So that was possible for the first time. At the same time, we were watching uh, uh, an anime series called Deno Coil. Download it. It's cool if you haven't done so already. 25 episodes. Uh, get the Japanese version with the English undertitles so you really get the, the cool stuff. 
and it's a couple of kids that are living in a, in a near future world, and they have these glasses. And if you look here at the dog, you know, it's only there and not in reality underneath the glasses. I mean, it's all about this mix of reality and not reality. To them, it's all the same. It's really a good near, near future story. At the time, we were also reading Rainbow's End by Werner Vinge. And it's also a near future scenario. It's a cool book. I would definitely recommend reading it. And one of the, in the, or in the beginning of the book, one of the, uh, the protagonists is standing in a valley, going through layers of reality, looking for I can't remember what. That's where layer comes from. That's where we got the idea of making, you know, like we're going to make a browser for the world, and we're going to use the layer model instead of a page and website model, as you know, you're all used to now with the internet. Because now we're talking the real world. What do you do for that? What are you know unique properties? I also read a post. It's called the Oh My God for Augmented Reality. And in there, yeah, I just got a lot of pointers and, and ideas to what, what to do. And also, you can't really see it here. We, we develop what we call the hype cycle of augmented reality. If you Google hype cycle augmented reality, you get back to the original post. And that's where we kind of found it, or got the idea of what to do with layer and how to go through the hype of AR, which we saw coming. And currently, it's, it's, it's I think, a little bit over its high point. And soon, we'll get some more reality in the augmented reality, I guess. So we had all these ideas, all these inputs. So hey, we wanted to get some money, because we didn't have any money. You know, we were consultants at the time, and you know, working our butts off for you know a couple bucks an hour, uh, doing cool mobile projects. No way are you. So for the local Facebook in Holland called Hives, we developed the uh, Friends Radar. And you know, like here in the U.S., you have the Fourth of July. Everybody's out and doing, doing parties. In Holland, you have Queen's Day. That's the birthday of the Queen. And everybody you can see kind of here in the back. You know, is outside wearing orange, getting drunk. And so we thought, you know, what if Hives, then they just launched Hive Spots, which is the same as uh, Facebook Spots, if you're places. And then, you know, we could get the API connection and get where your friends were last night, or just before, what, what places they checked into. And so, hey, you have a, a radar where your friends are, you know, because still people don't probably have their current location all the time, but that they do, their check-ins. So that, we proposed that to them, and they said no. <laughs> So, you know, we had a deadline of 30th of April, that's when, when uh, the Queen's Day was, but that didn't work. But thank God, I kind of did not mention to the next pitch I did that they didn't say yes. And so the next one was Funda, the, the housing site in Holland, who have all the houses uh, yeah, that there are in Holland. So they said yes, and then we got the first money to build Layer. And we found Indra, Neil, and Tu. These are the programmers. I'm not a programmer. Uh, Claire is in, Brimo is in. We briefed them with PowerPoints or keynotes about what we wanted. Yeah. And there are the two guys, and two didn't even really speak English. He just chatted English with us. And uh, yeah, every week I put some money in the bank to China. And that's how the first version came about. This is one of the, yeah, the first version. Very different interface to what you know now. Uh, and of course, then we launched. And you might have seen this video, if not, you will Old logo. I think. So in two days, I mean, the Twitter, tech blogs, old media even, I mean, in the New York Times, you got like a half a page with, with big screenshots on it, and everybody was writing about it. So, you know, hey, we were just three people in Amsterdam. What? But that was great. And hundreds of people wanted to, you know, make layers, wanted to do stuff with us. So right away, we're like, wait a minute. We can't just stand by the door and anybody wants a layer. Like, okay, here's one, you know, give us some money, and then you get one because that was a way we thought we'd make money. But we don't know what's popular in Argentina or in Tokyo. So right away we realized we should make an open platform. So that's when we called, called our friend Dirk. 
he's a CTO now, and he made the platform. So after two months, Layer went global. I don't know how to move that, but uh, so we went global, made sure that it's not available just in Hollywood everywhere, because now anybody could make layers, so it could be relevant anywhere in the world. And we had our first pre-install deal, so that's very important for mobile. See, mobile, the cool things about mobile, everybody got them. Everybody has them. Thing with mobile though is distribution. You know, how do you get your app downloaded? You know, now that's common. It's, it's two years ago. People were really getting still used to how that works. And the download thing is really difficult. It's better to be pre-installed. So people just find it on their phones and then they can do it. So we had the first pre-install deal with Samsung locally in Holland two, year, uh, two years ago. Now it's global. We have a global pre-install deal with Samsung, also with HP, uh, LG. So that helps us getting lots of users. Very important strategically. We had 90 layers. We had our first investors on board. Yeah, we were gearing up. And actually, that's when, when Bruce, uh, he's now gone, I think, uh, gave a, a talk at the launch of this. It's called At the Dawn of the Augmented Reality Industry. Google that. And uh, great video to watch. And we ran for an hour on AR, basically saying what's going to happen. And it kind of you know, led to this and other stuff. It's really nice. Uh, I just called them, like, will you know, do our thing and brief them on AR? Or like, just do something on AR and great show. Anyway, so in two months that happened, and then now two years later, we got 2,000 layers worldwide. We got like seven or 10,000 in development you can see on the back end that people are working on, testing out. We got 3D, we got animation, we got audio, we got interactive shit. Thousands of developers, so we don't do the content at layer. Everybody can sign up and make content. Individuals, companies, agencies, they're now even 50 plus. LPN members, they're called, like certified web agencies, but this is of course not the web, it's augmented reality. So yeah, layer partner network members, okay, we like difficult words. And we got 1.5 million active users every month. So more and more people are experiencing it. If you think about it, good number. But on the other hand, how many people live in the world? I don't know, I can't count really. But this is not a lot, you know, it needs to be 15 or 150 million to be really at a level, so still we're at the beginning. We got lots of investment, crazy amount of money, 18 million in total, working back the past two years, so, and, and yeah, you're enjoying that in a way now. We got, uh, hun uh, sorry, 60 employees right now, a uh, couple in uh, Holland, what is it, 38 in Holland, 20 in the Ukraine, Ukraine, we have a lot of development, they're easy to get there, people that really know how to program, want to do it, and want to stay in one place. So we have a lot of them there. We've got two people in San Francisco, Gene being one of them. 11 nationalities in the team. It's actually one thing with AR. There's a lots of Europeans there. Are there any Europeans here? Oh, yeah, sure. Good, good. <laughs> oh, hi. Good to see you again. Good, because we need more Americans to like, do AR. Because your guys are lagging, lagging. You know, you need to, like, we need to be more. We need to invest in with AR. So now we got like a new video. Bruce referred to it recently as this new corporate. I don't know, I don't like to be corporate. Layer is a platform where everybody can create their own fantastic augmented reality experiences. Augmented reality is a new mass media. It's where the real world is combined with digital information. We're going to bring these. <laughs> anyway, you can see it all that. Yeah. Layer is many things to many people. I mean, first off, it's an app to show off to your friends. Well, you know, we know that that's how it's a cool app. Layer is a platform to make money with by companies who want to help other companies get to AR in whatever form. I think if you really want to get into do something with AR, that's a way you quickly now to make money. And we provide the tools basically for free. That's a nice story to use in articles, so the press loves this stuff. Um, it's a good, unique selling point for people that sell phones. So, yeah, the operators and the manufacturers like that. It's a story of yeah, a couple of people from Amsterdam having fun with a startup. And okay. Providing a salary and income to 60 people, you know, that's what we're doing and making sure that that can happen. We got loads of money, that's, it's also a story about that. 
It's also a story without, you know, a company without having a clear business model. Because we're still exploring with augmented reality. We don't know yet, you know, we got the steering wheel, we got a motor somewhere, you know, code and stuff. But we don't know if it's a car yet. Can you imagine that if you have those, but you don't know what a car is yet? So that's what we're still finding out, and I think that's where you guys also come in. You know, what should we do with this? So we're only starting. We think AR is a mass medium. It's emerging, but in the end, it can be a medium that anybody will use and cannot live without. And a mass medium is mostly about, you know, you come up with a new device, a radio, a TV. And then slowly, you have people start using that to express themselves one way or the other. And then you have mass adoption, and yeah, then it is a mass medium. People can't live without it. One example being the, 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 the multimedia computer. Early 90s, you know, you got this big machine with speakers and CD-ROM. People didn't really know what to do with it. I mean, the publisher was like, hey, cool, let's put the encyclopedia, call it in Jakarta, and sell it for 40 bucks, and, you know, through the bookstores, which you kind of own somehow, and we'll make money. That's kind of like the app store, too, you know, the regular, regulatory channels to sell stuff with the market. And that worked, but then, you know, like, hey, wait a minute, there's also this modem in this machine. And then people found out about the web. The stuff was for free, you could share information and stuff. And eventually, all these giants were born that could not exist in the world outside of the internet. Like Amazon, you can't build a bookstore. Like eBay. Now, like Twitter and Facebook, that's like the second generation. So that's how the web became a mass media based on this multimedia computer. And, 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 yeah. So we think augmented reality can go the same way. So you have the phone. The first one that had all the stuff that we are now used to with our iPhone is the N95 from Nokia. And, and still, people, you know, we're now kind of in the CD-ROM age, you know, with our apps. We're still starting on. So we got this phone. Oh. Oh, it didn't work. Anyway, so we got the phone. Everybody's using, and, and just like the web, I mean, uh, uh, AR started in universities. So does AR. It did start in universities. Just like the web, you have like a Netscape moment where, like layer, you know, you have the, the, the browser. You also provide the server, so you get the content. That's the same thing Netscape did. If you also look at mass distribution, mass adoption, remember America Online, I don't know how old you guys are, but in the 90s, everybody got those disks. Or you got Windows 95 pre-installed with, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Internet Explorer pre-installed with Windows 95. Well, the same is, yeah, basically our pre-installs, uh, uh, we have a Samsung and now other com AR companies are doing the same thing. So everybody's getting access to it. So with all these people getting access to this technology, slowly the, the medium, yeah, unique, Companies will emerge from this, the Amazons and Twitters of this new medium. That's now about to start. Maybe one of you guys will do this. Evening. That'd be cool. So, getting back to what we have. Layers three products. First off, there's the browser. You can download it for free. Then we have a, for people that code, we have a, a, a player. So that's a piece of free code but is, well, that technically is the viewer, just the viewer of the browser. You can put that into your own app, you define your layer on the publishing platform, and then have it viewed in your own app through the player. So either you can point people that, yeah, you know, you will, that have to view your AR on the browser, or you can use a player. And so then the publishing platform, that's where you sign up, get access to the, the API basically to do all your cool stuff and all your cool ideas. Later, Solar and Gene will go more into this. So until now, I mean, we basically build a garden or a sandbox where everybody is trying stuff, doing stuff with AR. And the first thing we saw is that AR is informative. And that also is one of the most successful things. I mean, you have the wiki too, or sorry, the, 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 the Wikipedia kind of stuff where where is things, all the Wikipedia articles, or most of them have a, a latitude longitude, so you can put, you know, those articles in space. <laughs> Or Arc Inform, you know, they have a whole database of architecture all over the world. You can just go around and see what building is what. Very simple, where is we get layers, we call these. Where is something and what is it? Very useful. Uh, if you think, for instance, this is one of the popular layers worldwide, real estate. How much is that house? How does it look like inside? 
call the realtor, do an, op uh, an offer. That's what people do, and it works. And not just where it is, so with the logo or a little, little icon, but also like a complete 3D building of a new project, so you can walk around and look how it is. I like it, maybe. AR is also playful, so people are making games on it. Pac-Man. So it's currently it's offline, I don't know why, but uh, they programmed it so whenever you start this layer, they all pop up, well, you know, the yellow dots and the bows, you're Pac-Man. You have to run around while listening to the annoying 8-bit music and try to get the dots and escape the, uh, uh, the ghost. And it works. It works. It's kind of clunky. You know, we're, we're beginning there, you know, it's, it's a little bit, you know, it's starting. But it works. Technically, it's great. I mean, also Conquer is an, another example. Conquer, uh, you know the board game Risk, where you have to conquer the world together in teams. Well, you sign up here, you're either in, in one of the four teams, I'm Team Black. And then you can conquer places, uh, uh, cities, neighborhoods. They have a database from all over the world. And you can play against each other. And the cool thing is what they did is, you know, you attack the city and eventually hopefully you win. And you have enough armies to keep on going. And when you win, when you conquer, you can share that on the web. So you can announce it to your friends and get, you know, more users that way. Hey, that's the beginning of Farmville. So that's, you know, like where we think there are possibilities. And we really liked when we saw people doing this. It actually worked. People are playing it more and more. They're, uh, they're doing it more and more. They just launched the second version here. These are old screenshots. But uh, yeah, it's cool. Augmented reality is also social. One of the most impressive layers, if you want to impress your friends, is showing the tweets around. This is a Dutch screenshot. But basically, if you, if you do it here, and you show tweets around, anybody who tweeted here recently also posted the location of that tweet. So this layer gets all the tweets around here, what it said, the picture of you, of your friends who tweeted, and then you can see what they said around you. So if you go to a concert or whatever, you can actually see if it's fun or not. Right away. Augmented reality also reveals the past. I will be very short on this because, Gene, you got more on this, right? Uh, one of my favorite ones, uh, you know what, I'm not going to say anything. That's a cool one, this is a cool one, and that's a cool one too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, augmented reality is also commercial. As in people think they really can, you know, do cool stuff with brands and agencies and, you know, get a message across. Uh, one of the things in the beginning already, Prince of Persia, the new movie then by Disney, they did a campaign where you had a poster in the bus stop, said launch layer, and you would launch the, uh, the layer, and you would see in front of you the main character challenging you which of these objects does not belong, or was not used in the movie, and then you can look around and select the, uh, the object that wasn't in the movie, and that way you answer all the right questions and get the chance to win something. That's a way how you can have engagement around a cool event, in short. Uh, uh, this was uh, done, Splinter Cell was launched, a new version for the, the, the game. And they, did a, uh, they made a prequel in AR where you would, would be the protagonist, the agent. And in Amsterdam, you would have to yeah, find out why all your buddies were killed. And you would go to a location uh, here, and then you would watch a movie where something happened in that alley, answer a question on it. And in the end, you'd end up at the store where they sold the game, and you would get a free t-shirt and a discount on the game. And that's how they kind of illustrated the launch. Augmented reality is also expressive. I think this is one of the most important things that happened next to the history stuff. And again, I'm not going to say anything because Sander can tell that much better. He's going to tell about that, maybe about that, and you'll hear it later. So right now, I mean, after two years of augmented reality, we're seeing kind of, you know, what's going on now. And that is that it's getting cheaper to do augmented reality. It's getting easier to do. You don't have to really code a lot. And so therefore, more and more people can create more and more stuff in AI and tell their story in whatever way they want to. Well, we have lots of tools now, CMS-like tools, content management system, where with Google Maps, you just put stuff in augmented reality, or heavy-duty stuff for whole databases to quickly put them up uh, uh, in AR. We even have ready-made concepts now for brands that want to do stuff, and we don't have them. That's what these agencies have, these companies that use our platform to sell their services. 
So think about that. If anybody can augment anything in the world, if you guys could do that continuously right now, you could project a mustache on me if you want. Viking hat. I could be an elephant. And why not? Can you imagine that? And the thing is, if you think about the world, you know, go to, uh, what's it called here? The Walk, I think it is, in L.A. Have you been to The Walk? No, the walk there's or the, the street or something. Yeah, the, the fake commercial mall like thing. The Grove? No, it's the walk. Anyway, big center place where everything is made, especially here in the US, you know, McDonald's, etc., etc. You don't control all that stuff, that commercial stuff. And what do you do when you're there? You know, you hide away in your book, or you hide away in your, in your, your iPod, you ignore it, because you don't care about it. We never have a choice about the world that we are, or are we? You know, you have to accept that this is white, maybe you don't like it. So if you can change anything, you know, so say you're, you, you, know, you have this building, I googled the most ugly building in Holland, I got this one. It is ugly. So what, you know, in the near future, what if you zoomed in, and hey, there's this interactive object in AR. So what do you want? You know, just click on it. You want to demolish it? You want to keep it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the mayor of the city. I see 123,000 people want to demolish it. Wow. This is going to happen soon. How do you like your chicken? Has anybody had this type of chicken? You know this brand? So I looked up this brand. And it turns out that they have antibiotics in them. Who wants antibiotics for free in their chicken? I don't, I'd rather not have it. So say you are in the store next week and you pull up your phone, go over these products. And some people that are activists will look up this information and know it's important. They put this on the products in AR because they can recognize. And then when you look at it through a layer that does that, you can see what's really in these products. This is the future. Not if you're getting You kind of don't see it here. But this is a poster with a you know, nice body trying to sell cologne or something. I don't do sports. I have a baby on the startup to run. So, you know, when I see this fit body, I'm like, well, you know what? That doesn't make me happy. Actually, it makes me feel ugly. <laughs> so why not put that on there, you know, like a like button? This makes me feel ugly. And this is a campaign that is global. So anybody who sees that through their phone will say, you know what, this makes me ugly. And if you can reach so many people and they actually agree, say 12 million people agree, wow, you got some talk back to the brands. What are they doing? So I think augmented reality in the end will be, you know, you will unveil the truth in some form or any other vision, not just their vision of the product manager of the lawyers or whoever started it. And I think the web, you know, is in liberated information. <laughs> Music was liberated, you know, by Napster and all that stuff. You, know, you use iTunes because it's easy, but if you want, you can download everything for free. Same goes for movies. I mean, here especially, they don't like that, but, you know, I don't pay for my media. It's easier to download. And that's where it's going. And I think with AR, space will be liberated. Anybody can do anything to any space. You can share each other's realities. Full credit of, of our industry. This is too big. Who should play the top? called the Space Liberation Movement. 
I think you guys are the new recruits of the Space Liberation Movement. I think that's what you, you guys are going to do. You're going to show the world what you can do with space objects, location. You're going to liberate space. And that's what my question is for you. I mean, do radical stuff. Go crazy. Go go to, you know, do a project with, with or without Disneyland knowing it and make the porn version. Make the war version, you know? And then scan it and have something else show there than what they so control, you know? I think you can't even have a mustache <laughs> when you're hired by, uh, by Disney. And that, I mean, I hope when I come back in August, I probably won't be there in the beginning, and I hope that, you know, like, the papers will already have written about the project she did. Because this is something new, people don't know it yet, and it's really powerful. And I don't think commerce, you know, they'll find their way into AR, but it's people that know art, that have a vision, an opinion that is uncluttered by anything commercial. But, yeah, it's something from the heart, from the gut, that's what you guys have, fresh. And then, yeah, basically that's why we're doing it. So that's helpful. So that, in short, about what we are and what we want.